last time I went home, my dad gave me the box. This box was filled with a random assortment of toys and schoolwork that me and my parents deemed important as a child. And as I'm going through, I came across a page that I colored about second grade. And in second grade, I was given a C with the comment, great choice of colors, could be cleaner. In second grade. I don't even think I knew how to color in between the lines, but this was a moment amongst others that I started to realize maybe I'm not meant to be an artist, especially compared to my sister who was painting perfectly and drawing stick figures by the time she could walk. And I, whose work could be cleaner, was definitely not on the same boat. I guarantee there's a few people in this audience that can remember a time or a person who told you, being an artist or creative, it just wasn't our thing. But I'm up here to share my story and how I learned to call myself a creative. And if any of you are doubting whether or not you are creative, you in fact are. It's my junior year of college. I have a 2.4. I've just transferred to Colorado Mesa University from California. I'm in a verbally abusive relationship, anxiety, depression, no friends, no direction in life. So I decided to take five art classes. <laughs> I have never taken an art class in my life, and I decided I'm going to take five. And this was the hardest thing I have ever done. I couldn't Google how to do art. I didn't have a textbook that told me a step-by-step. -step. It was clumsy hands. It was smeared paper. It was paying my friends in coffee to cut my portfolio pieces. Because if you couldn't cut straight lines, how were you expected to be an artist? And it wasn't easy. I mean, take drawing classes, for example. I was held to the same expectations as the fine arts students. It came to the point that I went to a professor crying that, I don't know if I made out to do this. I couldn't draw a stick figure. I couldn't illustrate. I couldn't cut straight lines. How was I supposed to do this? Well, I found passion. I found passion for letterpress printing and graphic designing. It was beautiful and messy and raw, and it was full of failures and successes. And I found a community. A group of graphic designers, we leaned on each other, supported each other, and pushed each other to be better. And we went through with the motto, fail faster. That if you're not failing, you're not learning. So it was with these newfound skills and friends that I finally graduated college with a Bachelor of Fine Arts. And I started to find my way in the world. But it wasn't that easy. See, everybody was moving away. They were getting jobs in design and art, a path that I, too, thought I was supposed to be on. I mean, that's how it works. You graduate college, you get a career, you buy a house, get married, baby. And that's how it works. Turns out it's not. Uh, I stayed at the pizza place I had been at the last two years. And the best way I can explain why is by talking a little bit about a sea turtle. I like to imagine when a sea turtle first hatches on this beach, it has to scramble across the hot sand, trying not to get picked off by seagulls and tourists, just trying to get to the water. Finally, it does, but now there's waves and getting battered and tumbled, trying not to drown, till finally that tiny sea turtle is greeted with the vastness that is the ocean. And that's where I was. I was a lone sea turtle floating in the ocean without a purpose. This pizza place was comfortable. It was my new support system. It's where I met my new partner. It was everything, but it was comfortable. It was one thing to fail at a class. It was another thing to fail at what I was passionate about. So. I decided to take a casual 1,044-mile walk on the Pacific Crest Trail. <laughs> when you take a lost soul who worries way too much and strip it down to nothing, you're going to get growth. And the realization when you're faced with bears and bees and lightning and the dark, failure isn't so scary. 
So I returned home with three words burning in my brain, community, creativity, and passion. I wanted those three words to represent what I was doing, and the first step was community. So I got a job as a local barista at my coffee shop. And this was huge. It allowed me to connect and create connections. It allowed me to create a local zine that was open to anybody. You open these pages and there's poetry, writings, photography, paintings, all different types of skills, and it's all cohesive. To the point that tomorrow is our 16th month of production, which is insane that something so small is such a big way for me to engage my community. I started to realize failure isn't the end. And I didn't have to be afraid. So I wanted to keep this momentum going, which meant networking. Networking meant going into a room of creatives whose careers gave them titles on their business cards, such as graphic designer, illustrator, art director. I thought by now I too would have those titles. But I had recently got a promotion at work as head baker. <laughs> Do I go into that room with a business card flashing baker? Because as much as we may not want to admit it, those words do mean something. And I didn't feel like I belonged. It took almost a year for me to realize that it was on me to make that business card and stay letterpress, printer, and graphic designer. I had to redefine what it meant to me to be an artist, that it is in fact what I am, it's what I do. It's in my blood, and it's honestly in all of us. I have heard so many times, I wish I was a creative. And yet, they're building houses, spreadsheets, baking cakes. Take my partner, for example, he's a woodworker. I have heard multiple times, I wish I was creative. And yet you open that man's sketchbook and he has these drawings of furniture or a way to hold a table together without screws. If that's not creativity, I don't know what is. See, creativity isn't a scary word. It's nothing more than problem solving, going from A to B. We as humans have been making things since the beginning, whether it's a roof over our head or a math equation that got us to space. There's this stigma that the art world is unobtainable for the select few, but that's not true. The art world is just the world. Same for everyone. It's grungy and shiny, full of tears and laughter, frustrations, failures, successes. Failure isn't to be feared. And through that, we gain the ability to create things from our hands and feel a range of emotions tears, fears, and happiness. So what if you can't draw a stick figure or your painting doesn't live up to your expectations? You are still creating and we must never stop creating. To not create is to be stagnant and we have to keep the beauty of creation alive. I leave here with a challenge to go home and create something whether it's dinner, a poem, taking a photo of something with your phone, just take a moment for you and your inner creative. There won't be a professor telling you that's wrong or a boss telling you to go back to work. It's just you and that form you chose. Be creative and be nothing more than a human. And remember, don't be afraid of failure. I've spent the last three weeks afraid of failing by being on this stage, and yet I'm here. <laughs> if you want to be a creative, be a creative. You're the only one that can give yourself that title. And through that, there will always be people that will tell you that's not good enough or that's not right. But as long as you're happy and enjoying what you're doing, keep going. And finally, I think you are all pretty kick-ass sea turtles. <laughs> Thank you.